Hello, everybody, and I want to welcome you all to the fourth uh, Phys Ed Summit from ESPE Chat. Um, my name is Ben Perillo, and I will be your moderator. Um, as always, I want to thank um, the Phys Ed Go G team for kind of starting the Phys Ed Summit and helping out with the ESPE Chat uh, through the process of all this. So uh, we're doing something a little bit new. We are having... Um, we're using Padlet uh, as a go-to for questions as well. Uh, so if you have any uh, comments or questions, uh, you can access the Padlet from the website uh, from the uh, Phys Ed, I'm sorry, ESPEchat.weebly.com. And you can click on his link there to enter that. Um, of course, we're using technology. All kinds of things can happen with technology. So bear with us. If something were to go wrong, um, please stay tuned. Follow on Twitter. If you are following on Twitter, we ask that you use the hashtags, uh, hashtag ESPE chat and um, hashtag Phys Ed Summit. That would be fantastic. Um, so I think those are most of my announcements. So without further ado, I am going to turn it over to Dave Carney for his session, Back to School uh, Essentials. So go ahead, Dave. All right. Thanks, Ben. I appreciate it. And thank you to uh, the SB Chat team, um, again, phys, ed, phys edagogy, and um, just thanks for doing this. I, I, you know, I really want to be a part of this this year, so I appreciate it. Okay, I'm going to share my screen out, and thank you anybody who's on here right now listening. I appreciate that as well. So let me get out of here and get to my presentation. There it is. Okay, the back to school basics. So I went back to school yesterday as far as kids uh, came in yesterday. So um, obviously some of you are still far away, but some of you are you know, already in session. So hopefully this will give you a few tips and tricks. And, uh, you know, I'm always trying to learn and, and grow and and, and improve. So I'm definitely going to be, a, you know, watching these sessions and, and hoping to learn myself. So just a quick, I guess, a little bit about me. I taught in the classroom for 10 years, mostly fourth and fifth grade. I did a year of second grade. That was when I was uh, pretty much just out of college. So it's been a little bit. Um, I also took a short break in between. Um, so this is my eighth year teaching PE, uh, kindergarten through fifth. And it really is my favorite job I've ever had. I, I absolutely love it. And, you know, my, my goal is just keep getting better and better for, for my kids, for me, and uh, just want to keep improving. And I know everybody that's on, the, on this chat or in this summit, I'm sure, feels the same way. They want to keep improving. So um, my kids would probably get mad. It's about that picture probably about a year old. So um, anyways, <clears throat> all right. So this is my team last year. Um, I have a new, um, some returning, some not returning this year, and there's always turnover. So... I'm going to try to be as generic as I can because I know some teachers have, you know, it's just you in a class or you in two classes and some, you know, people listening have what I have and that's me on the right, um, have, you know, some paras and that's a whole nother kind of thing, giving them responsibility and, and conquering and dividing. So I do have large groups. I have, um, it just depends. I have anywhere around 80 to 130 students in a class. And so we definitely have to work together as a team to uh you know to make sure everybody's moving and grooving and uh learning and it's not always easy okay so my breakdown this year and it's been pretty similar last uh or at least since i've been there is 40 minute classes i see the students on average three times a week so again i know some some of you see your classes once a week and that's that's a struggle so you know i'm able to you know i feel like and this goes to you know playing to your strengths because I see them three times a week, I think I could do some extra things with them. Um, what I mean by that is, you know, when I first started doing, you know, I did a couple ed camps and I, you know, I figured if I miss two days, you know, I'm not saying it's a good thing, but you know, my strength is I see them a lot. I have big classes. So I, I could try some new things. Sometimes we bring in presenters, we bring in uh, the local baseball team, local hockey team, um, let's see, we've had, uh, actually a local football team. We've had lots of people, uh, come in as guests. And I think that's a strength of ours. We have a lot of kids, but we have a lot of time with them. So, you know, just again, be creative with what you have. Um, I've seen some awesome things online and people, um, that I've talked to PE teachers around the world and what they're doing. And I, I can't do all those things because of, you know, we're outside. We're in, oh, by the way, I'm in Florida. 
it's really hot and rainy and there's lightning and I'm actually, we're very close to the lightning capital of the United States. So we take that seriously as far as losing my space and going inside and, you know, everybody's in a different situation, but, you know, play to that situation, play to your strengths and be creative with what you have. Oh yes, summer, summer in Florida. So it's time to move on. <laughs> that hopefully isn't you, but uh, if, if it is, you know, that's why we're here, trying to all learn together. Hopefully this isn't you either. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, just PE in general, but uh, hopefully you're not that stressed out or that gung ho, maybe a little bit. All right, this is one of my favorite quotes. Obviously, if you plan to fail or fail the plan, you are planning to fail, or I've heard it said, if you fail to prepare, prepare to fail. And so I think going in with a plan is essential. Now, if you follow, you know, Twitter, any kind of social media, there's ideas everywhere. And so I really feel like there's just so much out there. You know, you need to focus, and I'm saying this for myself as well, you know, as, as educators, we need to really focus on the standards, focus on our lesson planning. Okay, there's things out there everywhere all the time. So you really need a plan. All right. All right, I always say stick to the basics, right? Stick to the basics. Okay, here actually is my, uh, well, the, the track and our bus ramp. And they added these this year, it's pretty cool. They added some four squares at um, courts, they added um, hopscotch right there. And so I'm gonna talk about physical space for a moment and I'm gonna get on my soapbox here actually. Uh, I'm really big on this, you know, protect your space. I mean, it's very, very important. You know, I feel like, you know, this is your classroom. I don't even feel like it, I know it. It's your classroom, it's your learning environment. You know, don't back down from it. I've had, and some of you don't have the situation, I understand, but a lot of you do. You know, I lose, it's easy to say, hey, recess for everybody. Yeah, it's awesome, and it is awesome. I want recess for my students. I want recess for your students. However, it's easy to say that when you're not being invaded by recess. Over the past couple of years, recess became mandatory in our district, which again, great thing. However, I lost some of my space because of it. I had, and if you can kind of see that grass right there. That is actually a big field. I had to you know, fight for that. And of course, I don't mean in a nasty, violent, or mean way, but really fight for that field to be just for PE because that field in a few months, well, yeah, around Christmas time would turn into uh, a desert. And I'm not kidding you. It's absolutely, it was, it was horrible because PE plus recess is just a lot of trampling and not a lot of rain at that time of year. And it was just, it was getting really bad. You know, I've lost my playground from, for recess, which we don't use a lot, but on free days or if we do a little Ninja Warrior course and things like that, you know, we lost it to recess. And, you know, I guess I would just say, make sure you are protecting your space, especially if you're a newer, a newer teacher. You know, you might be like, well, that's just how it is. You know, I feel like, no, that's your learning environment. I have kids trampling in all the time from recess, wanting to use the bathroom at PE while I'm in the middle of teaching, like 120 kids I'm teaching. And I tell them no or they wanna get a drink from recess. I just tell them they can't, I'm sorry. When the music's on, you know, I even sent an email about, about this the other day to all the teachers. When the music's on and we're breaking into our stations or whatever, that's fine. But if I'm talking to 100 plus kids and you're just come on in with your, you know, kids to go to the bathroom, no, go somewhere else. It's, it's very important. And I just, I wanna make sure everybody kind of gets that. Okay, along with that, you know, make it your own space. I, I inherited, um, Again, this is my eighth year, but I inherited some equipment and some things that you know I never use or, or wasn't planning on using, and, and really go through your your space and organize it um, at the end of every year or the beginning of every year. Go through it, throw out the garbage. Don't be a hoarder. You know, inventory your equipment, see what you need for your units, and go from there. And if you have a budget, hopefully you do. I know some people don't. If you have a budget you know, get the biggest bang for your buck. I mean, really, you know, there's things that I want, but I know it's not gonna impact, you know, 100 kids. It'll impact, you know, 10 kids at a time. And so it's not economical for what I'm trying to do. Um, also, 
and then this may not apply to everybody, but sometimes we lose our space for, or we have to go somewhere else for rainy days. If there's testing, I can't really be under my pavilion because the building's right there and it's too loud. Um, just be wary of that and, or be aware of that and make sure you plan for that. Um, I also lose that field right there for parking during the end of the year when there's award ceremonies. So, you know, things come up and we have to, we have to adapt to it. And it's, it's not easy as a PE teacher, if that's the case in, in your, your case. All right. I like this. And the Rays are my team. So I really think signals are a big thing and very important. And let's take a look at some signals we use here. So what I use, okay, we're, we are a Kagan school and this really works well. We put our hand in the air and say, freeze, please. And within three seconds, the student should be quiet and ready to go. Now, that's something that has to be modeled, especially the first week. Um, yesterday, when I had kindergartners come in, it was, you know, it's a struggle the first week or so with kindergarten or really any classes that are, are not used to what you're doing. Um, you know, fifth graders, unless they're new, they've been with me for, you know, this is their sixth year. So they know the expectations. But having signals in place, especially the first week of school, are so important. I mean, even if you lose, uh, you know, 20 minutes of time, 30 minutes of time going over this, it'll save you hours in the end. Okay, so I know some people use whistles, some people don't. Um, I do have a pretty loud voice out there, but I, I still use a whistle. There's just so many kids and so many things going on. So ours, we use, I use one whistle to start a game, two to stop. And three, it's time to clean up. It's time to, you know, we're done for the day and that's it. Let's see. So music, it's funny. My first year in PE, I didn't use music that much. And I think I was, I don't know if I was afraid of it or <laughs> what. And I love music, but I think it's very important. The students know, you know, when, when music's on and we're in, when our groups, you know, that's drink time, that's bathroom time. If it's off and I'm speaking, that is not bathroom time. That is not drink time. And I know a lot of teachers use that as well. And I, I think that works really well. But get your own style, get your own, you know, procedures in place, especially for the first week of school. It's just, it's just so important. All right. And here's some, here's some of the music, at least I use. Now, I don't use Spotify. I use Apple Sharing, but some people use both or one or the other. Um, you can make your own mixes. And Fit Radio, I just started using uh, mainly last year. I really got into it. And it's just great, especially background music, um, high energy or low energy. So it's, it's really worth it. Um, there's a free subscription or a free trial, and then there's also a paid subscription to that. I love Tempo Magic Pro. And I'm always going to give uh, Naomi Hartle credit for this one because um, I don't remember where I saw it, but I know it was her. And... I'm going to show you a video in just a moment of Tempo Magic Pro. It's great. Okay. The, the final thing I use for music, at least right now, are custom-made garage band. I call them montages. And I actually saw this when I went to uh, Disney. Um, I live, again, not, I live a couple hours from Disney. And uh, they used to call it Downtown Disney. Now they call it Disney Springs. And there's, uh, you can walk around. There's restaurants. There's shopping. There's... Um, tons of music everywhere. And there was a DJ that was, I mean, he had everybody going. It was, it was awesome. And he basically made his own mix. I mean, obviously mine aren't as good as these professional DJs, but, and he would take clips of songs, maybe like 30 seconds of a song, but the best parts, like the chorus or whatever, and then go to the next song and, and so forth. And, and the kids really get into it. And especially if you have it choreographed, like, you know, I'm talking to the great Ben Perillo. He's got lots of choreographed stuff. Um, you know, that's really the way to go. That's the way to get kids really, really moving. And I'd like to show you that actually right now. I'm going to show you Tempo Magic Pro. It's a real short one. And GarageBand, uh, actually one of the montages. Just bear with me here. Let's see. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, I'll do Tempo Magic Pro first. Can you hear me okay, Ben? Is this good? Yeah, I can hear you. I don't know if you can it's not a great video, but so we'll go fast right now. We'll take it off. And watch this. Today. 
All right, that's good enough. Um, so that is Temple Magic Pro. I believe, um, I'm gonna guess it was around $5 for the app, um, at least the, whatever the pro version is. And then um, it's, it's just well worth it. You could, if you own, if you download the music onto it, you could put pretty much any song on there. And it's not like a chipmunk type music, like when you speed it up, it actually speeds, as it says, the tempo up or down. And it's just great. The little kids, the younger kids love it. They love to go really slow, then really fast, and then really slow. And it just, it's just great. Um, I'm not going to show this whole thing. I, obviously, it shows there's seven minutes. I'm not going to show this whole thing. But I want to show you kind of how I use these, do these music montages. That was my, uh, my by the way, uh, this is Dwayne, my para from last year. He can dance way better than me. So no make, no make it fun of me, please. So we used lots of different uh, songs in there. You can see it was only two minutes. And we played about three different songs. I actually want to go towards closer to the end because I wanted to show you that I actually can dance a little better. Let's see. Um, so in, in this montage, I mean, there's probably 10 songs. I don't know, something like that. And I'm kind of lost it here. Some different. All right. So there's a little thriller. See, I can dance a little bit. Let me see. Let me get out of here. That's some of the hard part, getting back in. All right, here we go. So let me plug my headphones back in here. All right. So let me go back here. So those are some ways we use 
again, Temple Magic Pro, which I think is just amazing. And it's just a sliding thing. As you can see, it's, it's just great. And then GarageBand, those montages, you know, little piece and then a little buffer sound and then another piece of a song and buffer sound. And the kids, as you can tell, they were singing. They know the words. Um, if you do it enough, they know the dance moves with it and the exercises that go with it. So um, just something I think has been great. Okay, rules and procedures. Definitely something first week, gotta have them. All right, so these are some big things to at least think about. Now, what, what you're gonna do might be differently than me, but you know how they come in, how they line up, you know, beginning and end. If you have dots, which I do, I have dots that I paint on the cement now. Some of you have a gym floor, so that's a different story, but you might wanna have things to come in and with, with markings on them, like the uh, that floor, whatever stuff that I saw some people have on there. I don't have that. Um, or poly spots. You know, ha definitely have a procedure for bathroom and drinks. You know, first week of school, especially if they're new or they're kindergarten, first grade, they want to just get up whenever they feel like it. And, you know, you definitely want to have that in place. What, however you, that looks, again, I tell them, and I <laughs> reinforced it yesterday at, at school. I said, wait until we break off into our stations ask that coach. Now I know some of you don't have another coach, but maybe it's when the music's playing bathroom or drink when it's off, you know, you can't use it. Okay. Discipline. You really need to, it's, it really is a school wide thing. You, you need to check, you know, what's the policy if this happens, what's the policy if this happens. And, you know, it, it just varies from district to district, school to school. Um, we actually have a new AP this year. And so, you know, I was trying to talk to him after school about, you know, do you want me to call you? Do you want me to call the other one? He, they didn't really have it hashed out yet. But, um, you know, I try to deal with it myself as much as I can. I don't want to bring administration in if I don't have to. However, if it's some kind of physical confrontation or, uh, you know, a bullying thing or something, um, obviously that's another story that, that needs to be taken, you know, addressed. Also, um, you know, I know a lot of people, and I'm going to give, um, a few people credit for this one. Uh, ben Landers, the Conflict Corner. I know he kind of worked with Joey Fife on this to create some posters. And Conflict Corner works really well if you model it. Okay, they go to a corner and they discuss. They there's a procedure, but they kind of hash things out for themselves instead of coming to you with every little problem, which happens all the time for me. Um, <clears throat> I'm actually doing something this year, which I, I think I've seen somewhere. But I I made up uh, a reflection corner where they can go to, um, it's kind of like a bench area and fill out, you know, what happened, what could you have done differently kind of thing. And then that, that's their ticket back in the game. And I know some of you can do it or have done it with their, your iPads, which would be great. If you have that in place, awesome. Um, I don't have enough <clears throat> iPads for that. And I also, just in general, I don't do a lot of iPads out there because our Wi-Fi is really spotty. And so I just kind of do my own thing. Okay, um, you know, you need to know, and it's good for the kids to know, what does a typical class week or unit look like? And you don't have to have everything mapped out the first week of school. However, you know, my students know in 40 minutes, they're going to come in. The first, I'd say, 10 minutes is warm up and question, you know, questioning, big question. And maybe either turn and talk or walk and talk, something like that. Then the next uh, 20 to 25 minutes I'm thinking of doing my math right. Um, they'll be at the, whatever station they're, they're, they're at. And the last five minutes are drinks, cool down kind of thing. Um, and they know, hey, if they do a good job, now we, we do fun Friday because I see them three times a week. So if they earn it, they get a free day on Friday. And uh, I don't always do it, but for the most part, and I know a lot of you can't do it, but you know that's something I put in place. Okay, um, and again, just to have this in place, I don't really do a lot of substitute plans because I know that if I'm not there, my parents know what to do, and I do give them the plans, but there's always one, it's never a time where the, all four of us are out, but if it's just you by yourself, definitely have these, you know, these plans ready to go. If you're gonna be out, um, you know, rainy day, for me, you know, we have rainy days. We, we go inside and it's, sometimes it's, we're squished. You know, we watch Ben Perillo videos and stuff like that <laughs> to get moving and, um, you know, do some other things in, inside. And, and you just have, have to know, you know, when you lose your classroom, what are you going to do? 
All right, so technology. Okay, so technology, the way I use it the most is I use my projector. Um, okay, because again, I don't have, I know some of you have Chromebooks and, and iPads, you know, one-to-one -one or two-to-one. We, we don't have that. We, we do have Chromebooks, but not, not for PE, basically. So I use my, you know, I use my pr projector, which I'll show you my setup in just a moment. I have a picture. Um, I project all these things you see on there. If we're doing a video or a, a, a new unit on, well, let's say the first time we ever did chook ball, I show them, you know, a video of, you know, people diving across, in, you know, the European finals or something like that. And they were just like, they were just wowed by it um, or anything like that to get kids just ready for the unit. Um, I project things like Fitness Blender and just some different apps um, when they come in for just a different kind of warm up. And uh, I put the PowerPoint because that's what I projected yesterday. I had a PowerPoint ready to go um, for the first two days just to, you know, keep me on track and, you know, get the kids, um, you know, showing them what's, what we're doing for the year. Okay. Um, you know, some people do portfolios. I use Seesaw a little bit. My problem was, or my challenge was, I have I just had too many kids, and so they only were able to log in like once every week or two, and it just it was hard. So I I kind of got rid of that for now. Um, I do have an iPad, and so to just use rubrics on there or um, do the numbers grade book thing like things like that, record you know video pictures, and then go back and use something like um, huddle huddle technique or something along those lines to analyze the video. Let's see. Okay, and I had a problem with this, so please don't get shiny object syndrome. It is a real thing, I promise. Um, when I first got on Twitter and Voxer and basically PE social media, I wanted to do everything. I wanted to get every app. I wanted to do it. Just it's just not it's not possible, and it's also not practical. So do what works for you in your learning environment. Okay, this is actually my setup. Now, I, a couple days ago, I got a different screen, though. I got a portable screen. It actually is a smart board um, on wheels, and I put it in front of this because you can see the glare, and that's what I was having problems with. It was the glare. And so, you know, get in good with the tech guy. Get in good with the uh, your building supervisor, and they will, you know, they will help you. I, my tech guy is great. He came in, he, I'm not kidding you, he came in uh, halfway through the year a couple years ago. He was like a 19-year-old, just graduated, and he fixed every problem we had. And he was amazing, and he's still there. And he gave me this, a better screen, basically, for my, for, to project with. And that thing on the left there, that is my <laughs> go-to you know, pl for plugging in my iPad or my phone. Um, again, the, if you can use Apple TV or you have access, that's awesome. Um, again, the Wi-Fi and outside is just not strong enough. It's just very spotty. Okay, so let's talk about uh, kind of planning. Um, you know, the first thing is you, you can't just go in and just do whatever game you feel like doing. And I think I, I, we've seen that on social media sometimes too, where people are just like, hey, that's a cool game. I'm gonna try that next day. And I would hope you have a plan in place that, you know, there's a time and a place for different units, different things, but um, we need to follow the standards. Um, this is a big, I guess, discussion kind of thing is, you know, do you, do you use your state standards or shape or both? Um, some people I've been told don't even have state standards. I'm not sure if that's true or not. I, we do in Florida. However, I was in a meeting the other day and there was no actual curriculum, uh, curriculum map for PE in my district, at least not this year. And so, you know, I'm going to be following uh, shape very closely on that, but I'm not going to neglect my state standards. So again, that's a discussion for maybe for you and your district, but definitely something to keep in mind. Um, you know, why follow standards? Of course, we want to make sure the kids are physically literate. They are, you know, you're on track for what you want to teach them and they need to learn. And uh, just, you know, remember, and I'll talk about this later, you are a, a teacher. You know, I am a teacher. I'm not just, uh, I know people like, he, he teaches gym. I, I've heard that enough. I just, we are educators. And so we want to make sure we move the profession forward in that way by, by doing what's expected of us and following you know, the standards and the grade level outcomes. And uh, yeah, we're talking about structuring your lessons around them in just a moment. Um, 
understanding by design or backwards design is, I think, by far the best way to plan. And it's not easy. It takes work. And even if you just get one or two really good lessons done a year, uh, and then just, well, more than that, but I mean, like units in place by using um, UBD, it will benefit you later as you, as you grow as, a, as an educator, really hone in on the standards, the assessments, and then the games to go with it. And this is how I'm going to actually show you kind of how it's done here. So first you look at the standards, then you look at, this is, uh, this is UBD. You look at the standards first, then using the verbs, you look at how you're going to assess. Now, here's some of the ways I assess. Okay. The formative way, I use Plickers quite a bit. Of course, um, if you've been on Twitter, you've seen uh, Mike Ginacola and uh, Tana Ruse and other people using uh, Plagnets, which I have adopted. Um, they're incredible. Plickers Magnets um, and anybody else I'm leaving out, I apologize, but um, just great stuff. And I'll show you a picture of that in just a moment. Okay, I don't do a lot of summative tests because it just takes too long, honestly, and I'm not required to do it. Um, I, I have done it before, but I usually do more of these other types of assessments. But this might be something that you need to, uh, to look at or that your district you know, says you need to do. Okay, I like this, the you know, real life, authentic, either by rubric, video, poster, something where it shows that they know what they're learning and not just, it's, it's just very, it's real. I mean, it's, it's just real. You could tell, hey, they got it. Okay, and I use this quite a bit actually, um, especially when, again, with a big group, um, Solo Taxonomy is a great uh, resource. Um, I used in the past, uh, some of the vocabulary got the kids tripped up a little bit. So I just, you know, when the people uh, or the teachers use um, ba basically the, you know, the not yet, you know, getting there, got it. Um, I'm missing something, but you know, basically the four, the four levels, that's basically solo taxonomy, um, kind of. Um, I have the students, especially at the end of a, a class period, give me a one through four, like either they got it or they're having, you know, still, you know, getting there kind of thing. Or even on effort level, you know, I gave a, hey, I gave a four today. I did, the, I did my best. And they'll just kind of show me with their fingers where they're at. And we have that discussion. And it's really quick, a good quick check for, you know, a lot of kids. Or 20 kids. Um, I'll actually show some of this in a minute. Also, the, uh, we use <laughs> chalk sometimes and they can make thinking maps, which um, we are a thinking map school as well as a Kagan school. So we use lots of. Uh, different types of maps to to show their learning. Um, I kind of toyed with a group folder last year, and it just, again, it was just too hard with six or seven classes coming in at a time and organizing that. So it's just something I'm kind of put on the back burner. But I do walk and talks, turn and talks. Um, it's just important to get the kids a, a good, you know, some good questions and see where they're at. Okay, and here's um, some pictures of some of the things we're, We've done in the past. Um, okay, the plickers, magnets, the plagnets are up top. Um, the, there's the talk, talk and chalk, I call it, yeah. Um, they basically draw on the cement and show what, they, what they've learned as a group. And obviously, if you have a gym floor, can't do that. But, you know, you know again, play to your strengths and do what you can do. This is a thinking map on the bottom. And um, any kind of video delay, there's the BAM video delay. And um, I think there's another one just called video delay just so they can come around and take a look at their technique. This is actually during Jump Up for Heart. Uh, one of the stations was Long Jump. And so they got to come around and uh, just see how they did. We doing okay on time, everything bad, everything good? It's, uh, we're at, it's, uh, yeah, it's okay. You got about 25 minutes to tell. Okay, we're we're done. I guess we're done right here. Maybe, depending if you have any questions and stuff, you still got about 15 minutes if you want to stop or 20 minutes okay. for questions. All right, we'll do a little bit here. Um, okay, so games activities, this is probably the, you know, the bread and butter here. Um, first week of school, definitely, definitely, definitely build the culture, okay? The expectations, the procedures, but also the culture, okay? I do a lot of these type of games, the getting to know you type games. Um, I use group juggle a lot. And if you're not sure what that is, um, you can probably look up. I know Joey Fife has something on group juggle, defend the pin. But you don't even have to use that. It's more about passing a ball and asking questions. Um, I did this at a camp this summer where 
they pass a soccer ball and the person who got it said their name. And, and uh, it depends what topic, you know, the favorite movie or favorite food. Okay, you can use four corners with questions. Say if you know if you went to the whatever, if you went out of town this this summer, go to this corner. If you you know if you did this this summer, go to this corner. Um, things like that. Or if you have a dog or whatever, just um, so then they could get talking about you know they can talk amongst themselves also. Oh, where'd you go? You know that type of thing. Um, there's other. Oh, I want to show you whoosh ball. Um, I don't know if we have time. I'm, I might wait on that. But whoosh ball is a great game for getting, just building that culture. Um, I actually saw it. There's a, there's a great website. It's called Ultimate Camp Resource. And they have lots of cooperative learning games. It's really for like camp kids, but I just took them and said, hey, we'll play them in PE. And there's something called whoosh ball. And I also have it on my YouTube channel as well, Coach Carney 99. Um, I'm not going to play it though for time. And also I was toying with it um, or was listening to it earlier. And it, it, there's a lot of wind. It, it's hard to hear a little bit, but... It is a fantastic game. It's, there's not even a ball. It's just you're pretending with a, you're, with a ball. And I even saw the kids playing at a recess after I did it. So it was, it was pretty cool. All right. So cooperate, uh, cooperative learning or cooperation games. Um, some of these are, you know, old favorites. Uh, some of them are, you know, maybe you haven't heard of them. But the group of threes, I, uh, I was at a conference. I think it was the, uh, the, yeah, it was the PE Institute in 2015. And, uh, I want to say who ran it. I can't remember, but um, they did a great job. We just did, we were in groups of three and there's lots of different ways that we had to tag each other or we had to pass a ball and things like that. So um, just some, just get them talking, get them, getting them. Uh, I don't want to say, but, you know, shaking hands, saying hi, those type of games. We do some things with, uh, well, I put here dots. <laughs> they have to go to different dots and, uh, as they walk around, they have to uh, high five as many people as they can and say good morning. Just building that that culture, but that respect for each other. Um, you know, practicing, um, especially the first week or two. Just make sure they know where to go, when to you know when to go there, and also being kind to each other. You know, I told my students yesterday. I really, I think it's if you're the best basketball player that ever came through our school, I think that's awesome. But if you're going to be the ball hog and not be nice to people, then I, I kind of really don't care. I'd rather you be an average basketball player. And so, you know, that's just my take on it. I mean, I, of course I want them to learn. I want them to be physically literate. I want them to love, you know, uh, being active for their whole life. But, you know, if you're just gonna be mean, then, you know, let's, but I, I think we need to develop the whole child. Um, Okay, kindergarten, I don't do a lot. They, they're basically on their dots. I, I don't have them move a lot the first two weeks, or at least the first week. I, um, just to make sure they know where they're supposed to be. They, uh, we do lots of things around the dots, and we do adventures where I'll pretend they're on adventure in the you know Amazon or something like that, or on Mars, and, and they'll do different movements and um, different things like that. So I actually want to show a video of kindergarten. <laughs> just some different songs we do. I know some people are like, well, what songs should we play? What's some different things? And one of the things they really, really like, let me, mm, let me back out of this for a second. Yeah. Let's see if we have time. Okay. I'll do this one video real quick. It's uh, if anybody has ever heard, it's the, uh, the artist is Perry grip. He does some Disney ones, DJ shuffle. Um, my, my daughter, my daughter likes uh, unicorns. So, there's a song called Space Unicorn. She just asked Alexa something about a unicorn and it came up. So we play that. And uh, rainy, it's raining tacos. Remember this? It's amazing. But I want to show you this because this is what I do with kindergarten or I did last year. I'll bring some kids up, kids that are doing a good job, give them uh, an object and they can help us dance up front and do the exercises. So give me one second here. Where is it? Raining tacos. Just, just part of it. Especially my daughter next to me. We did not coordinate our outfits.
All right, just a little piece of that. So what they'll do is they will go and then pick somebody else after that. That's a pretty short song. So then they will go and um, pick somebody else after that song and they will uh, give it to somebody else to, uh, to dance up front. But they really like it. You could tell, I used to play on Taco Tuesday and even yesterday they asked me about it. They're like, we play training tacos? Um, so anyways, it's, it's something they really enjoy. It's fun. All right, the last thing, or the main thing, that I'd like to show you or discuss. And this is a, for me, this is a big one. All right, the intangibles. Now, in this actually, the, the local baseball team that came in um, near the end of the year last year, just bringing, bringing guests in, you know, the kids love it. They actually, that, um, I can't think of his name, the, the, the tree right there, I forgot his name. <laughs> I'll think of it afterwards when we're done. But, oh, Sway. Um, we actually had the bike trailer that that week for third, fourth, and fifth grade. So we got Sway to ride a bike, and it was just the kids just love it, I and mean, they're just chasing them around. And it, it, well, and recess was out there, so they were watching them, and it was just something fun to do after they presented. It was just cool. But passion and customer service. Um, I my parents owned a grocery store for almost thirty years, and uh, customer service is just so important. And you know, we are in the customer service business, whether we like it or not. When the kids come in you know, greet them, say hi, high fives. Um, you know, even in the morning, I'm, I'm outside in the morning doing the uh, parent drop off and I'm, you know, good, trying to good morning, you know, as many as they, people as I can, you know, trying to get the kids to smile in the morning. You know, we are in that business. Um, the passion, you know, I wanted to, uh, man, maybe I can show you real fast. Here's, here's what happened. Here's, this made me think of a, we went to a place called Sky Zone. I don't, know if, I know some people have Sky Zone. It's basically the, you know, you jump around on the, uh, trampolines all over the place and, and different things. And what happened, uh, th this is my daughter, um, if I can get out of here for a second. Here's what happened. She was doing this thing, this, uh, it's Ninja Warrior basically, Ninja Warrior course. And this is the, you know, they say beat that wall. This is the wall. And I, I don't have, vid actually I do have, I took, this must be the 30th video I took of her that day. And she never, be she never got on it before. She never beat that wall. And there was a there was a girl there that was and she was younger and she was nice and she's like okay your turn go okay go and then this guy I know you can't see him this guy stepped in and he started going oh you ready you ready okay go 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 get it get it get it and she and not on the first try but you know he just really encouraged her as he was encouraging everybody um, you know to and and that little bit you know I was proud of her this is the first time she ever made it so I just say this slow mo action there. All right, you got the picture, but you know, to me, that's important. You know, we are in the customer service business, basically. I mean, that's you know, if you're just if you're not gonna be passionate about it, then the, I mean, the kids can see that. The kids know that. Let me put my headset in here for a sec again. All right, um, yeah. I mean, if you if you teach PE, especially kindergarten through fifth, you got to be goofy. You gotta you gotta be moving around. You gotta show the energy because the kids they won't they won't put in the work. They won't show that energy if you don't. Um, this is hard for me. Knowing kids' names, I have, we have over a thousand kids in our school, but I practice as much as I can. I look at the yearbooks and I try to, you know, put names of faces. I, I memorize, try to memorize the best I can. Um, I'd say I probably know well over half, especially the older kids I, that have been with me, but the younger ones, it's harder, but getting to know their names is so important. Talk about bringing guests. Um, you know, I know grant opportunities aren't always there, but we've written some grants for some really cool stuff, technology-wise and, and other. Oh, even the the rail yard. The um, I know actually Ben, you have the rail yard, right? I think Ben has the rail yard. Uh, Mike Graham. Um, yeah, actually, I saw it in one of your videos. <laughs> the kids were like, "Hey, there's a rail yard um, obstacle course." I mean, that was a seventy-three hundred dollar thing, and we got it for free by writing a grant through the uh, through the there's a foundation in our uh, district. And I'm gonna write another grant this year. I'm gonna see what we need and what what uh, what we can do for our kids. Um, the last thing I'm gonna leave you with, and I man, I didn't think I was gonna go this long. Um, okay, be proud to be an educator. You are an educator. Um, I just my brother just called me. I don't know, how, uh, well, a little bit before we started here, and he just doesn't get it. He doesn't get what I do. 
or my dad doesn't either. They're like, what, what are you just, just rolling ball, you know, basketball's out there anyway, kind of thing. I'm like, no, I'm not. Um, if you ever seen School of Rock, I know that the quote didn't actually come from here, but my brother says this all the time to me. He's like, hey, you remember that quote? If you, if you can't teach, oh, I'm sorry, if you, what is it? If you can't learn, uh, those who can't, what is it? <laughs> uh, basically, those who can't teach, uh, teach PE, basically. And it's just like, I don't know. It's, if, you, if, we want, if we, as, as, a, as PE teachers, want to push our profession forward, you know, we need to you know, educate the people that I, they have no idea what we do. And we have to be proud of it. You know, I, I have, and I've seen, it, I've seen it a bunch on social media, that thing where it's like first, you know, first week of kindergarten, you see people putting cats, you know, hurting cats. And yes, it's funny. And yes, it's 90% true. But, you know, I just, the more we kind of laugh at that and put that out there, I think the more people believe that's what we do. And, you know, I want to, you know, I want to, oh, even, I even watched a movie last night. Um, the new Disney movie, because my daughter wanted to watch it, the, the new Freaky Friday. It's like the, you know, 10th version of the movie. But um, the, the PE teacher in, in that one was, I don't want to say stereotypical, but but yeah, I mean, the stereotypical PE teacher that, and the, the kids hate, and she's making empty threats. And this is what the, the media portrays us as. And so, you know, I just be proud and, and stand up for, you know, your profession, because I love it. I want to keep doing this. Um, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop with one more uh, video. I'm going to bounce out because um, <laughs> I just, uh, I was talking about my favorite show on TV right now is the Goldbergs. I absolutely love that show. But the, the PE teacher on there, he is so 80s, stere you know, stereotypical PE teacher. And um, we want to make sure people don't think this is us. So let me do one last thing. Okay. This is just great. Very quiet. I was just trying to keep my shirt on. Shirt, skin, shirt, skin, shirt, skin, shirt, skin, shirt. Yes, I'm golden. Shirt, skin, skin. Whoa, hey, hang on. Better be important, Goldfarb. It is. You double skin. Oh, how about that? I did double skin. But you can't double skin. It's shirt, skin, shirt, skin. I can skin, skin anytime I like. If you skin, skin, there's no rules. It's chaos. Maybe now you'll know what it feels like to be a young girl coming of age. Wait, is this about Emmy? The best teachers never reveal it. It's about Emmy. So it is about Emmy. She's just eating the note. Everybody eats the note. Why do people think eating paper is a viable option? Just for the back talk, you're a skin for the rest of the week. No! Now you're a skin for the rest of the year. You keep it up, you'll be a skin for life. You can't do that. Trust me, on your wedding day, you will walk down the aisle shirtless. No respectable venue would allow that. It'll be a beach wedding. Ugh, that sounds wonderful and like my worst nightmare. That was when I... <laughs> I just thought that was awesome. Uh, let's see what we got here. All right, so... Be proud of... <laughs> be proud of our profession. And uh, that's honestly what it was like in the 80s for those of you old enough. It was shirts and skins, and yeah, it, was, it was not good. So um, make sure you connect with people. Don't be, in, don't be an island, um, especially if you're the only PE teacher at, at your building. These are, there are ways to connect. You know, the way I got to talking to Ben and other educators, um, just with incredible ideas, uh, especially Twitter and Voxer. Um, I did create, and some of you uh, are part of uh, my large group, PE Nation Facebook group. Um, it's welcome, you know, it's anybody's welcome. However, um, we keep it kind of large group based as far as what we talk about, but anybody's welcome. Um, so that is about it. The, that is my contact information. If anybody um, has any questions or wants to connect, I would be more than happy to share my uh, music mixes or just anything. Um, and love to hear from any of you. It'd be great. All you Ben. <laughs> All right. Well, that was that was awesome. So, yeah. Uh, thanks, Dave, for coming and presenting for a Phys Ed Summit. I hope everybody enjoyed it. I know I definitely have got some takeaways. Um, I'm going to look again at Padlet. Uh, if anybody, I haven't seen any questions come through yet. But if anybody has any questions, there's some time left mm -hmm. here. We can. Um, definitely answers any. Um, yeah. Getting a question about I, I didn't see any though. So yeah, I think uh, I think you hit the nail on the head with with a lot of what you're saying, and it's very important uh, starting the year off on the right foot with your students and everything like that. So 
yeah, fantastic stuff. Thanks. I appreciate it. And I appreciate you. I've gotten learned a lot from you and uh, love your videos, of course, you know. My kids think you're a rock star. If you ever came to my school, you would be like a lot. No. Yeah, I got you. Okay. You're back now. This is a little skip. Well, I appreciate it. That was fun. I okay. Well, um, we're going to go ahead and end it now. So, uh, again, thanks, Dave. Thanks for everybody for tuning in and watching. And uh, keep, keep coming back for more. There's a few more sessions uh, for sure. So thanks, everybody. All right, thanks.